Good evening. Welcome, welcome. My name is Obinda Akon. Welcome. I want to share with you what I what I term developing as a business person. Developing as a business person. We when we were children we used to hear that when the the people who came to colonize us came and uh, they started to uh, establish uh, schools uh, later on or the missionaries when they started to establish schools later on our grandparents uh, who had money those who were into cocoa farm who were into trading those who were chiefs they didn't send their children to school because they did not want their children to be punished they told us and um, they wanted their children to you know take uh, after them in terms of the the trade that they had so the cocoa farm the 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 other businesses that they had now uh, i i heard that some of them were sending rather the servants or the poor in those times where the were the ones who were sending their children to school now the ordinary mind will think will say or they themselves at a point may even have regretted that why didn't we send our children to school or um you know well, the children themselves will say that my parents did not send me to school now there is something good about school there's something good about school which is um, um you know reading writing being able to do some mathematics which is the advantage of going to school but it also occurred that those who happened to send their children to school when the children went to school and they became uh, teachers and lawyers and doctors and you know and, and became professionals they did not want to go back to look at their fathers or their mothers or their their parents businesses and cocoa farms and, and things like that so when by the time that they finished going to school they didn't want with the with the with the businesses or the, the 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 way their parents were making uh livelihood and revenue now i think about it sometimes and i think that the parents may not necessarily have been wrong for saying that don't go to school because by the time you get you can they will destroy you with the school <laughs> except that they should they should at least have found a way of telling their children how to read how to write and how to you know do some basic mathematics because when they had uh, their letters sent to them or when they wanted to keep any data they would want to call somebody who could read and who could write and and yet they did not want to send their children to school i think that there is some kind of wisdom uh, at a point in not sending your children to this kind of school system where by the time that the people finish school they don't believe in themselves they wait for organized labor to give them jobs and they they become less ambitious they don't want to fight for anything and they, they live in comfort and i think that is the same you know the same kind of culture is in our school system now where when we finish school uh, we wait for help we don't like pain we are we, we are status conscious and we don't want to build anything from scratch uh, from 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 the ground so if you look at our current uh generation those who have gone to school are always you know very much attracted to very nice jobs and very nice positions in the in the in the in the economy you know and so they become directors and professors and doctors and managers of big organization because i think our grandparents our sisters they saw the wisdom in having financial freedom and and having and being able to take care of your family than just going to school to get degrees they may not have been able to interpret it for their children to understand that we did not want you to go through this kind of school because we thought that by the time you finish this schooling everything else would have been jammed <laughs> and the fact is that <laughs> by the time you finish going through this school system everything else is jammed everything else is jammed some people cannot see themselves beyond the kind of school training that they had the kind of certificate that they had the kind of education that they had you know so i'm talking about developing uh, uh, uh as an entrepreneur developing uh, uh, uh 
as an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is tough. If nobody told you that entrepreneurship is tough, they have not done it before. It's difficult. It's been it's been ingrained in us. Ancestors may not have had a lot of documents and, and theories and research on entrepreneurship. Now we have people doing PhD entrepreneurship and MBA entrepreneurship trying to extract data on it. The journey is very rough, it's volatile, and, and just like any other thing, it it is tough, you know. But for me, if you want to fight against the establishment, if you want to live beyond the normal social script that we get after we have gone through school, you would want to start something on your own. You would want to dare. You would want to try something, even if it doesn't work. And by the time that you have gone through this school thing, very few would, would be able to have the confidence to even try anything. Because the school is engineered such that you are prepared for corporate work, for big factories, uh, for employment. That is what school does to us. I think uh, the advantage of going to school should not be that they have given you tools to go and look for work or job. But you can, you can, you can use the tools to live your dream. You can, leave the, you can use the tools that school supposedly uh, give you, which is the ability to read, to write, to, to separate data and, and have some kind of mind that can understand some things at a point. You use that to live the life that you want. Very few people understand that. And if you go through the colonized countries of the world, uh, the people who try to become entrepreneurs, most of them are not the ones who have gone to school. They are the ones who think that they have no other option but to do something for themselves and so those who go to school will then end up waiting for somebody to always give them a hand and you you, you always hear that uh, graduate unemployment is very high and things like that and um, it's unfortunate for you to, as a human being uh, to go to school and finish and you still think that somebody owes you a living somebody would have to set up a company to employ you you know, I think that you should know what school gives you and what school does not give you. And so developing as entrepreneur, I, I happen to have gone through some of this in our country. People who give us a lot of talks and they organize a lot of seminars. You know, there are people who are monthly waiting for salary and teaching those of us who they believe that we can find job how to uh, start business on our own. <laughs> so they cover with a lot of data. They give us a lot of advice. They teach us how to prepare a business plan, you know, and, and they have not done it. They have not done it or they have gone to read MBA and, and, and courses like that from other countries. And they come here, they are on radio, you know, uh, t telling us they are consultants. There's a whole difference between being a consultant and being somebody who who starts business from the ground, ground up, with no exposure, no network, nothing. And you say that you want to build a business. That journey is rough, it's tough, it's, 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 it's almost dangerous to whom I hate, but it's also doable. It's always doable. And so we live in, a, we live in this kind of environment. It's tough. Most people would have to just look at that way it is, uh, that you have to start something on your own. And if you want to start something on your own, stop listening to people who have not done it, who have not gone through anything. They have not failed in one business. They have not lost any penny before. And they're teaching you how to start a business. <laughs> you know, they, so they copy a lot of developed countries' concept and they come and dump it on us and say that we should start business. The, the reality is that a lot of the areas that we would want to start businesses in Africa will not be exactly the kind of areas that these kind of economies, developed ones, are doing. A lot, I, for one, I think that most people starting businesses should look at agriculture. You know, if you look at the, the structure of our economy, agriculture providing houses, cheap houses, uh, uh, trading on these things that are critical to the sustenance of economy, you know, food. So it's either you go into the production of the food from the field or the processing of the food stuff or the trading of it. It's either you go into something that is connected to housing because housing is a big challenge uh, or, or trading in any of the materials that are used for housing and or pro, pro, producing the housing uh, the houses themselves or you look at uh, education is also something that people can go into uh, you know look at the economy waste you look at water 
I don't think that a lot of our young people should spend so much time looking at how to build uh, modern day applications and technology and things like that. I think a very few percentage of us should be looking at that. A large, where our help, uh, where we really need help, are the areas of food. You know, how can a country be importing food? How do we get a lot of our people who we are saying that should go into entrepreneurship to focus on the areas that the continent needs? The areas that if is uh, uh, the areas that are sustainable, you know, because there are some businesses when you go, there's no, there's, it's not sustainable because the market or the or the economy is not ready for that, and so it's not just I uh, want to start a business or anything at all. You just go into it. You should look at your passion, and then you should look at the areas that we really need help, and the areas that the help will be needed for a very long time. And if you look at Africa. One of the best areas would be agriculture, whether it's the farm, whether it's the, the, the poultry, and anything that is connected to that. Whether the implements that you're producing, the farm itself, everything, or processing the food stuff. And then if you look at the housing, as I said, it's the same, construction and, and, and the trading of it. Now, developing as an entrepreneur, and you have never started anything before, if you have never started anything before, like the way we started, we just went to school. So the disadvantage we had was that we had a, a very sensitive, critical mind. I, for you know, I trained as engineer. So uh, for a long time, I was in school. Uh, <laughs> I visited engineering to the master's degree, which was not needed as an entrepreneur. Really, it was not because the earlier you start, uh, especially when you don't have any any network, any money, the earlier you start, the better. Unless you want to start as an apprentice in some kind of. Uh, 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 a factory or organization and you learn the trade for a while if you didn't have that opportunity opportunity to learn a trade or learn a skill and you just have to start something the number of mistakes that you're going to make will be so many and the mistakes are going to come from your inexperience how to how to have the right idea the right business idea which area of the business that you should even start the kind of people that you start the business with the constant doubt that you have in yourself your little knowledge in terms of how to organize your finances, how to raise capital, how to have the right partners. You know, all these things, if you didn't do them rightly, for the next two, three, four years, the mistakes are going to show up. And they are going to show up in some of them will show up in a very bitter form, dangerous form. You know, so you start a business with this friend of yours, it goes, ah, uh, then you hit the rock. And then everybody runs away. Everybody does not want to be part of the pain, of the struggle. Some of them will even accuse you, vilify you, say that you are dishonest, you are this, you are that, because they did not understand the processes that you have to go through to develop as an entrepreneur. And so, you know, and the losses, the, 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 the people, you'll be cheated, you'll be, you'll, be, you'll be screwed, you'll be lied to. It's all part of the game. If you didn't have that much to start, if you didn't have that much to start. Now, the benefit is that if you understand when we were doing it, we didn't understand that that was the, that was the trajectory. That was the path. We didn't know. So at the point you, you become discouraged, at the, at the point you become pain, at the point you want to say that, why did I even put myself into this? At the point the network around you feels that you are stupid, you don't know what you're doing. These are the realities. <laughs> now, this thing is not even unique to our kind of environment. In some kind of environment that they even support uh, what they call entrepreneurs, they still have to go through this. They go through it. All of them, they go through it. Except they, they even no matter which skill that they came up, they came into the business with, they will still at a point go through a lot of these things that I'm telling you. Where you will you, you'll be cheated, you'll be, you, 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 you know, your partners will run away, your employees will run away. They will not just run away. Some of them will run with your money. Some of them will run fighting you. Some of them will accuse you. These are facts. Um, and some... You know, you will lose money that you will never have lost if you were not in, in, in trying to build a business. You will get into associations that you didn't have any business getting into. Some people, you didn't have any connection trying to get uh, connected to them. You didn't have to. But because of your quest of building a business, because of your quest of trying to uh, test a business model, all these kind of people will come on your way. Now, the thing is, the earlier you start, the better. Because then by the time you are still young, if you started, say, 15 years, by the time you are 20 years, you would have learned so much. Because no matter what they teach you in school, if you want to start a business, that itself is a school. And it's way tougher than the one that you had to write the exam, you know, that you failed and you didn't even want to <laughs> write again.
doing a business trying to build a business is way tougher if you have never done it you have no clue what it is you can talk about it just like the professors who teach business talk about them but they have no business to prove what they are teaching it's okay when you are teaching us about the statistics and the data on it but we cannot use their knowledge to build a business really because the strength and the courage and the confidence that comes from building a business comes from doing it you know so by the time that you get the idea working you would have experienced so much losses so much pain you may have had a lot of disagreement with with people with your partners with your employees by the time that you start to understand that this is the kind of industry that all along i was wired to become uh, strong in you have made so many mistakes that <laughs> you would not even want to give up but that's the point when you are at the point of giving up that is at the point or you are trying to you know, understand the path, the journey, the profession that you have taken as somebody who wants to build a business. And it's that tough. So just be open. It's tough not to scare you. It is tough to just make you aware that if you want to do this, this is what it takes. And so when you hear people talking, 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 it's not just about talking. It's, there's one thing when you want to do it and do it rightly. And there's another thing when you just want to screw everything to get money. And so, and a lot, of, a lot of people who talk say they are they are starting business and they are build, they are building businesses. A lot of them are just doing it without the character, without the honor, without the respect for people, for our systems, for our laws. They just want money. That is not the kind of thing I'm talking about. I'm talking of somebody who wants to build something beyond himself, and he wants to be ethical. He wants to have values in doing that. If you are that kind of person, and you're coming from where nobody knows you, nobody wants to give your money to you, nobody wants to bet on you you're going to screw a lot and you sometimes you go everywhere to pick people's money and you didn't even know what you were using that money for sometimes you go to the bank to pick money and you didn't even look at the interest rate because we're so sure that that project will work that product will go and it didn't go and now you have created trouble for yourself trouble for your family trouble for everything now if you're in that kind of situation don't give up it's part of the process never give up you will be able to fight your way back up and by the time, by the time that you're way back up you, all the cobwebs on your eyes will be, will be gone and you start to make white decisions and white choices. The thing about the business entrepreneurship development is that all these mistakes, all these errors, all this disagreement, all this pain that you continue to go through, they are trying to harness or they are, they are trying to make you develop a skill that when you get to a point, you will know exactly what to do in a particular industry. And you'll be so sure to do what you want to do because you would have come through a lot of pain, a lot of struggles, a lot of mistakes. And now that you're better, you're better positioned, that somebody who will see the same opportunity may not be able to even identify it. But because you're coming from a background that you have gone through all this thing, that opportunity will be there and you'll be well prepared to fight and take it and build a business out of it. And every one of us, every one of the people who you see have built businesses, they have gone through this. They have gone through this. You have gone through a lot of, you try business A, it didn't work. You try business B, it didn't work. You try, uh, you try a product, it didn't work. You're so sure that it didn't work. And you were so confident that these partners, the one, the two, the three, were going to go with you. When you hit the rock, one, two, three, four, they say that, no, 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 no. no. This guy is not sure of what he's doing. We don't want to be part of this. They leave you. And they don't leave you when things are good. That's the most painful aspect, <laughs> when people start to leave. Most people will leave when things are very bad. But when they leave, if you don't know the processes, the development that building a business, build, becoming an entrepreneur goes through, you become bitter. You become, you become pained. No. It's part of the process. When they leave, don't let the pain stay. Continue. Continue to go. Continue to go. You may have sold everything that you have. You, you probably owe everybody. <laughs> Continue to go. Because it takes the part, the, the number of years that it takes for people to get to where they build a profitable business is highly, you know, the, the at variance. It depends on your condition. It depends on the industry that you started. It depends on your personality. It depends. It's so unique with everybody. And so the fact that your, your friend started a business and two years is profitable does not mean that you, the kind of person that you are, the kind of business that you started, will you also be able to be profitable that quickly. Some people will take three years. Some people will take four years. Some people will take more years. Some people may even try 10 businesses before they start to understand done or before they start to get a business that works and that becomes profitable and so when you hear all the good talks about the people who are have found the key now
what they are not telling you is that when they were fumbling, when they were weak, when they didn't know what they, they were doing, you didn't know them. And so now you see them as superstars. But the time that they were playing uh, in the sun, uh, in the soil, you know, you didn't see them. So now they are playing the premiership and you think that they started there. They didn't. And so when you are in your stage where you are preparing, don't confuse those who have been able to go through the same process and they are performing and they are getting results. Don't, don't, you know, some people want to look at all this stardom. They are looking at all these billionaires around the world. I, yes, I can read books about them. I can learn about them. But really, their stories are very much different from the kind of stories that we have here. You know, so focus on what you're building. So have, you know, um, um, you have severed uh, and, and, and people who separate from you, relationships which who, who go. Don't be bitter. Don't be pain. Uh, keep moving. You may have to try a lot of businesses, a lot of products, a lot of services after a while to see that which will work. And your personality type and your, and your passion and where the economy is going, they are key to the kind of business that you will find which will be profitable. Because when you are starting businesses, most often we don't even know. We just chance to, to come to meet something. Maybe you met somebody who was doing something, you saw it and you were fidgeting and then it becomes a business. You may not have decided to say, that, oh, maybe I wanted to start this kind of thing, and you studied it. A lot of us didn't go through that. We're just fidgeting. We're just trying something, and it worked. <laughs> and then it worked for a while, and then you started, you started to see that it was not working. It's not because it, you, were, you were wrong. It's because now you are going to go through the process to become a business person, to become the person who can make right decisions, the person who will be able to identify the right uh, talent, the person who will be able to build the right system, the person who will be able to uh, uh, raise the right capital for the business. And it does not happen in a day. It takes a while. It takes a while. And it also even depends on the kind of business that you enter. And so, you know, you hear, you hear very few people study business. Very few people study the entrepreneurship journey. So you hear of them talking about, you know, all the, 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 a lot of people say that they want to start business, so they won't get an MBA. <laughs> you need an MBA to start a business? They are lying. You don't need an MBA to start a business. You need them. You need courage. You need confidence to start a business. And you, you, need, you need to keep going when everything seems like everything is failing. When everything seems like you are the most dumbest person that ever tried business. Everything that you, you touched was failing. And there were a lot of controversies around what you were doing. 99% of the people who built businesses were in that situation. So don't make yourself so unique. Sometimes I talk to some of our friends who are building businesses and sometimes they are in critical situation, tough situation. And, 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 and I tell them it's not unique. It's not unique. It's part of the development. It's never unique with you. Especially when you had to start as green as you started. It's not so much unique. When Sometimes when you see businesses that start and they are running so quickly and flourishing, go and look at the background of the people who started it. It may not be their first business. They may have tried a lot of things which didn't work. And now they found something that is working. And so when they are present, you think that they look like you. You probably are older than them. You probably are more even schooled than them. You probably even had more money than them when you started. But what you don't know is that they came in with a lot of exposure, a lot of investment, a lot of trial error, errors, a lot of things that they, 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 they have clarity of mind on what they're doing now. And so when they have a little, they'll be able to multiply it quickly because they have studied the process. You know, so the, 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 the journey, the developmental journey of the entrepreneur is, is full of pain, disagreement, discouragement, insults, people will vilify you. Don't worry about it. They don't stay forever. When you start to see the business start to make sense and the business starts to become profitable, all those things, you will forget them. Even if you don't forget, the pain will reduce drastically. Because once you start to succeed, <laughs> the success will correct the pain. The success will correct the pain. So don't worry so much. If you're in the middle of the pain, keep going. Keep going. That's how it is built. That's how it is built. You are going to build a network. You are going to build the financial intelligence. You are going to build the, the exposure. You are going to uh, get the skill to run, to, to, to even pick the right people and manage them and lead them. 
people. Management is everything. Leadership that you're providing to the business is everything. Wow. We had a light off. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs>